Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today is a bit of a longer video for you guys, but it's a really important one to me personally, because I love talking about editing workflow and how to get faster in Studio One. I honestly believe if you can reduce the amount of time that you spend editing in any software, also Studio One, then you automatically increase the time that you spend actually creating. And also, the faster you edit, the closer you are to your original idea that you had when you opened up the arrangement, because yeah, you just don't get sidetracked so much if you get it done really fast. And this is why today's topic is hotkey ergonomics. I see a lot of Studio One users trying to avoid the keyboard as much as possible because they find it quite daunting to try and remember all of these keyboard shortcuts. But here's where I really can put you at ease because not only do you not need to memorize all of these, it's totally enough to just learn the ones that you use the most regularly, but you can also assign them on the keyboard yourself, wherever it makes the most sense to you so that you can memorize them better. And this also makes sense from an ergonomical standpoint, because depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed, whether your keyboard is flat on the table or slightly tilted, all of this creates different keyboard shortcut requirements that you should account for. And before this sounds more theoretical than it has to, I mean, I sometimes love making it sound like I wrote a dissertation on this. I haven't. This is all pretty much learning by doing, right? And every person's different. So you kind of have to figure out what works the best for you. I don't know which commands you use the most, so I can't tell you which commands you should assign. But I do have a couple of rules that you can follow if you want to make your shortcuts more ergonomical. And my first rule is that the most important keyboard shortcut or the most frequently used keyboard shortcuts, only you would know which ones those are, should be the easiest to reach on your keyboard. So an absolute no-no is complicated modifier key combinations for Studio One shortcuts that are essential to your workflow. We don't want to start with Option, Command, Control and V for a command that you use 50 times a day. That's ridiculous. None of that. And a great example for an easy reachable key that is completely unassigned and ready to use for you in Studio One is the return key. Shockingly, that's assigned to absolutely nothing in Studio One, which to me is a real shame. So let's go ahead and change that. We can do that by going up here in Studio One to the keyboard shortcuts menu. And when you set the keyboard mapping scheme to default for a moment, you see that Enter key is currently assigned to nothing. That's such a shame because this is such an easily reachable key that we can assign to shortcuts that we need all the time. For example, reset window positions. I love having this assigned to the Enter key because I work with different monitors in Studio One. And when I switch from my MacBook to my Mac Pro here, often the plugins are just like way up in the corner here. Now just hit the return key and I get it right back. And if I had to do this with like uh, command plus option plus A or something like that, I would instantly forget this keyboard shortcut and it would also not be ergonomical. I need this all the time, so it needs to be on the easy reachable key. All right, so with that said, let's continue with my second rule of keyboard shortcut or hotkey ergonomics. And that is that Studio One commands that are similar in nature and are often used together should be placed on adjacent keys. That makes so much sense ergonomically, and you can also remember the shortcut assignments way better this way. So what do I mean by familiar commands that are often used together that are similar in nature? Well, let me show you an example right now. This example is one of my absolute favorites because I find that it demonstrates the big advantages of ergonomical keyboard shortcuts in a beautiful way. So we go to Studio One and Keyboard Shortcuts once again, and we want to assign the commands page up skip, down skip, and show channel editor to F13, F14, and F15 respectively. And you see that there's already keyboard shortcuts assigned to these. And if you're hesitant to override any of the existing original keyboard shortcuts in Studio One, rest assured you don't have to. That's the great thing about Studio One. You can assign multiple keyboard shortcuts to multiple commands. So if you want to leave the original keyboard shortcut set intact, you can and just map out additional parts of your keyboard that are 
free, for example, the numpad to an ergonomical workflow. And more on that in rule number three, let's not jump ahead here. So we just do what we set out to do and basically untick the page down keyboard shortcut in the navigation box here. And if we now click enter key, we can add an additional key. So let's start with page up skip here. I unselect once again, the navigation box that's currently selected and select enter key instead. And if I now hit F 13 and assign, you see that I now have an additional keyboard shortcut for the same command that didn't override the existing one. So a very non-destructive way of adding new keyboard shortcuts to your workflow. I mean, this is quite important for people who go into different studios that might also run Studio One uh, more and more these days, certainly also in the professional market. And um, yeah, they might work with the default keyboard shortcuts and you don't want to lose compatibility with those studios. So it's great that you can do it this way. But anyway, so that's F13. And the next one that we want to assign is page down skip. So we do the same thing. We untick the navigation box. We enter the new key F15. And the last one that we need to assign is show channel editor. And now let me show you why these work in such wonderful harmony with each other. Usually, if you work on an arrangement like this and you need to make adjustments on the insert effect chains, then you first of all need to open up the track inspector here by clicking on this I symbol and then you double click one of the effects and then you go through the insert effects like so, right? And when you're done, you probably go to the next track and you double click again. And this is very inefficient, especially if you're working on like a widescreen monitor and your mouse has to travel all the way from one corner to the other. Instead, I can use this beautiful new keyboard shortcut mapping, this ergonomical workflow that I now have and select the track, hit F14, the key in the middle, and then hit F15 to go through the insert chain and hit F13 to go back. And when I'm done, I can close it, go to the next track and repeat that. And if you do that a couple of times, I promise you there's no going back to the original method that you once had. This is just an absolute ergonomical dream, right? Like for example, here on the lead, I open it up and I see the entire insert chain. The first one is the Pro EQ, then red light distortion, then compressor, then Pro EQ two instance number two in this case, that I could close that or leave it open. It's my choice. Open up the next one, go through that chain. And it's super easy to memorize because I'm just hitting adjacent keys. This will super quickly become part of my muscle memory. Which leads me straight to rule number three of hot key ergonomics, which is if you need to override existing keyboard shortcuts to meet the first two rules, then do it. Your personal workflow requirements always take priority over factory settings, at least in my opinion. And if you don't want to go this far, I understand. But then remember that these pre-assigned Studio One commands can be assigned to multiple keyboard shortcuts. So then you can still map out an unassigned area of your keyboard to meet this requirement. But I really believe that if there's a couple of keyboard shortcuts by default that you don't really use and they're on attractive keys, ergonomically speaking, then override them. There's no reason to shy away from that. And a great example for this is previous hotspot, next hotspot and split. This is something that everybody needs in their sampling workflow and is also really important when you're timing vocals, for instance, more on that in just a moment. So we go to Studio One again and keyboard shortcuts, our favorite menu. And when we enter the keys H, J and K, which are directly adjacent to each other. So perfect for any kind of ergonomical workflow and assignment that we see that they're currently assigned to next parameter toggle read and touch. Now, I don't use any of these commands regularly because I have a fader port right here. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense to leave these keys assigned in the way they are, right? If anything, I would assign the existing commands to a modifier key combination because I don't use them this often in accordance with rule number one. We already talked about it. The most regularly used keys should be the easiest to reach. So H, J and K should be something I use all the time I don't use these ones all the time, so they should go on modifier combinations instead. I hope that makes sense. So to override them, I just search for hotspot 
This is a command I do need all the time. This is very personal to me. You might be different, but just to get the principle across and I have them right here. So next hotspot, in my case, I'm going to assign to K and then previous hotspot I assign to H, H like hotspot. Now the middle key of H, J and K, which is J is still free and that I assign to split. Just add J. Okay, and let's say that I was working like on these tracks here and I wanted to cut out, say, a couple of samples to use them with Sample One XT or Impact XT. Then I could now use K to jump ahead a transient at a time, hit J to cut and then hit H to go back if I need to. Check this out. Do you have any idea how long this would take me if I did that with the original keyboard shortcut assignment or even worse with no keyboard shortcut assignment at all? I would stop doing this immediately because I'm lazy by nature and this is just too much work, right? You could also take the split command and assign that to add bend marker instead and then you basically achieve my vocal timing workflow that I've already shown you in a different video. I'm gonna link that right here if you wanna learn how to tighten up and quantize your vocals extremely fast. So hopefully this can at least inspire you to reconsider some of the keyboard shortcut configurations that you currently have. And thank you for watching.